There are many terrifying abilities in the world of Bleach, but few of them inspire fear quite like the Quincy King's Ausvalen. The Ausvalen, or the Holy Selection, is an important part of Quincy and Vandenreich lore, and every time it's used in the series, it inspires terror in the Quincy's and really helps to change the course of the Thousand Year Blood War. It's a power that really defines both the cruelty of Yuharbach, but also his immense strength and his ability to freely give and then steal power. However, the Ausvalen is kind of nebulous in both how it works and how it operates, and actually there are some real inconsistencies in the way the ability is portrayed in Bleach. In this video I want to take a look specifically at Yuharbach's ability, the Ausvalen, and see how it affects those around it and how it affects the Quincy, the Sternritter, and take a look at some of those inconsistencies in its portrayal and see if we can't come up with why that might be and maybe look at some kind of alternative. Before we begin though, if you're interested in Bleach lore and discussion videos just like this one and you haven't hit subscribe yet, you are in the perfect place. Make sure to hit that button now and keep pushing our channel, making it bigger and bigger. And also if you haven't hit the like button, do so because it really does help with the exposure on YouTube and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well just to stay up to date with all of my videos. Although you, Harbach and the Vandenreich partake in the first invasion of Soul Society and are around from the very beginning of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the idea of this holy celestial Election ability doesn't actually show up until volume 60 at the tail end of the Everything But The Rain flashback. It's here at the end of this flashback that Ishin tells Ichigo the real reason for his mother's death. Despite being a powerful Quincy, she was somehow killed by the Hollow Grand Fisher, and now we know why. Nine years before the main storyline begins, Yuharbark was almost close to completing his revival, and he steals the powers of all the Quincy's he deems to be impure across the world, the mixed blood Quincy's. He utilizes the Ausvalen for the first time in the series that we know of anyway, to steal their powers and kill all the Quincy's he deems to be impure. Unfortunately, Masaki Kurosaki is one of those and her powers are stolen from her. On this same night, Uryu Ishida's mother also had her powers stolen from her, Kane Katagiri, also another mixed blood Quincy, the wife of Ryuken who was a pure pure blood Quincy so he was spared from the Ausvalen. Yuharbark robbed Katagiri and Masaki of their powers along with every other impure Quincy in the world, the only one who survived being Uryu Ishida. Yuharbark wouldn't use the feared Ausvalen ability until much later on in the Thousand Year Blood War arc when he uses it to steal the powers of the Sturmitters he has deemed unnecessary and help revive his elite guard the Schutzstoffel after they've all just been killed by the Zero Division. This is the first time Yuharbark utilises the Ausvalen in the present timeline and you really get to see the terror inflicted on the Sturmitters down below as they realise their majesty has abandoned them. It's a really awesome moment and we find out that the Ausvalen is unique in that it doesn't actually transfer Reiatsu or Reishi, it is a complete transfer of power. It is literally sending strength from one person to another. And this all stems from Yuharbark's unique ability as a Quincy who can actually give power as well as simply take it. All Quincy's are able to take power from their surroundings, take Reishi and dominate it at their will. But Yuharbark has the unique ability to actually give out parcels of his power as he pleases. And this is actually really interesting and I honestly cannot wait to do an analysis on this character because I think he's really, really fascinating. In many ways he feels like the devil of the Bleach universe. So many people make deals with Yuha unknowingly essentially, their lives are going to be cut short because he has this new hold over them. It's actually revealed in his flashback you find out when he was a little baby, many people almost saw him as this miracle child because they could go to him, they would touch him and a part of them would be healed if they were ill or injured or something like that. Unknowingly to them, what was actually happening was Yuha was giving them a portion of his soul and that was giving them what they needed, but when they would die, that soul would return to Yuha and make him even stronger. And those people who actually got healed by him, their lives were cut drastically short. So Yuha is this really interesting character, I think. He is this super sinister child almost with like these religious undertones of being worshipped like a god but in fact he's actually it's like making a deal with the devil you get something but in return Yuha has complete and utter control over your life and this is really seen with the Ausvalen. All of these Sturmitters have been given something by Yuha Bark and that is signalled by the shrift etched into their souls but at a moment's notice he can rob them of their power 
and of their lives in some instances. Regardless, this Ausschwalen is completely successful and it does steal the powers of numerous Quincy's down below. Basby, Nana Nanajakoop, Lil Toto, Giselle, Robert Akutro and all these characters and the elite force, the Schutzstoffel, are resurrected more powerful than ever before. The Ausschwalen is used one final time right at the end of the series and this one is a little bit strange. I'm not entirely sure what it's actually accomplishing here, but basically Yuha Bark has defeated Ichigo at the top of Varvel and he is ready to travel to Soul Society and begin destroying all three worlds to create something brand new. Before he leaves, he decides to use the Ausvalen on his remaining Sturmitters, claiming he has no need for them anymore. So he uses the Ausvalen on Hashwolf and Gerard Valkyrie and we get to see both of them suffer because of this ability transfer. But what's weird here is it kind of looks like Yuha is using the Ausvalen to actually create this portal to Soul Society in front of him, building on all of the energy that's being drawn to him and using it to actually rip a hole in, in essentially space-time and go through to Soul Society. However, it's possible he could create this portal regardless and what he's actually just doing is taking their power to make himself stronger. That's also possibly pretty likely as well. He simply says that he has no more need for his children, the Sternritter, or for Ichigo. So those are the times the Ausvalen is actually used in the story. It's used twice in the present timeline, each time with devastating effects on the Sternritter, and once in the past in the Everything But The Rain flashback when we find out what really happened to Ichigo and Uryu's mothers. However, the Ausvalen indirectly comes back right at the very end of the series to screw over Yuha Bark, which I always really, really liked. And I know a lot of people take serious issue with the end of Bleach, which I completely understand. However, I love the poetic justice that is delivered to Yuha Bark right at the end of the series. So we find out that pretty shortly after Katagiri's death, Ryuken is performing an autopsy on her corpse, and Uryu stumbles across this and has no idea why his father would be doing this, but actually Ryuken has a secret agenda. When Ausvalen is performed on a Quincy, it creates a blood clot in their heart which eventually kills them regardless, and that blood clot is made of something called Still Silver. Ryuken takes that silver out of his wife's body and uses it to form an arrowhead which will eventually be aimed at Yuha Bark himself. And it is. Uryu fires the still silver arrow at Yuha Bark right at the very end of the series and when it pierces him you see it flowing through his veins robbing him of his powers for just a moment just long enough for Ichigo to deliver the final blow on someone who is effectively a regular human at this point. But it's really awesome seeing the agony on Yuha Bark's face as he experiences that terror that he has been partitioning out among his so-called children for so many years. As far as he's concerned, they all simply live for him. And this is a mindset he has gained over the years by being revered as a god, but in reality, he just thinks all these people actually live for him. He might be helping them in the short term, but in the long term, they are all going to die early and their powers will return to him and make him stronger, make him live longer. And that's why I think he is a fascinating character that I wish Kubo had actually gone into a bit more detail on because it really is making a deal with the devil in that sense, in many ways that you have no choice in. However, Yuha Bart does lose his powers here for just long enough for Ichigo to finish him off, and it's really poetic that a still silver arrow made of the clot that killed Uryu's mother is what helps finish Yuha Bark off. So, for the issues I have with the end of the series, genuinely, the still silver arrow is not really one of them. I think it's maybe not executed perfectly but I love the meaning and the message behind it. So that's all the instances of Ausvalen in the series, but how does this thing actually work, and what are the inconsistencies that I mentioned earlier? Well, all we really know is that Yuha has the innate ability to take and give power almost totally freely. He can do so at will. He even mentions against Ichibei that all things in this world exist for his taking, and he's able to simply take power restore his own power even after it's been taken away from him, and he even tries to steal Ichibei's powers at one point in the fight. The Ausvalen, or the Holy Selection, is simply the ultimate version of this. Yuha Bak can steal all of the powers of the Quincy he deems impure or unessential, unnecessary. He can take them all and use it to power himself up or then partition it out among Quincy that he does deem to be necessary. 
But the Auschwitz effects on the victims are strangely varied, and in many ways they don't seem to have any kind of consistency whatsoever, even as much as on the same page. To find out more, we need to look at the victims of the Auschwitz. So let's begin with the original victims, Masaki Kurosaki and Kane Katagiri. Masaki Kurosaki has her powers stolen from her in a single instant, and I believe this renders her completely unable to use any Quincy abilities whatsoever. Now, it's not actually confirmed or explained, but the fact that Gran Fisher is then able to finish her off with no difficulty whatsoever implies to me that she essentially becomes a normal human, but it's pretty clear that her flesh is not stripped from her bones, she does just become powerless. Katagiri is slightly different, but there is an explanation given to this one. She actually falls into a coma and dies a few months later, but it is revealed that she was sickly beforehand anyway, so the Auschwitz was essentially just speeding up a process that was already probably going to kill her. So in some ways, these two actually will work out absolutely fine. They are consistent with what we know of Auschwitz. The real weirdness starts to happen during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, during the second invasion, when Neuharbach decides to resurrect the Schutzstoffel. Now, we see numerous Quincy actually hit by the Auschwitz point blank, and each of them seem to have a different thing happen to them. The first one, and the one that is a true example, is Robert Akutrone, who has his flesh ripped from his bones the moment Auschwitz hits him. Now, when this originally happened, I tried to rationalise it as Robert is clearly one of the oldest Sternritter, he's probably weaker physically at least anyway, and therefore the Auschwitz was able to rob him of his life force much easier than it could a regular Sternritter. However, what happens later on completely debunks that theory as Gerard Valkyrie, one of the strongest of all the Sternritters, has his flesh ripped from his bones as well. So, there is no consistency here. Not only does Robert have his flesh ripped from his bones, but Basby and Nanana are also struck head-on by the Auschwitz, and they both survive. Not only do they both survive, but they both keep their shrifts. They actually keep their powers. I'm assuming neither of them can use their holy forms anymore, but Basby and Nanana, for all intents and purposes, come out of it absolutely fine despite being hit point blank by the light. And Nanana can't even move when he's hit by it, so he's also pretty weak. He's basically unconscious at the time, yet he somehow survives. So it's not explained why Robert is killed outright while the other two are able to live on. And what bugs me the most about this is that Kubo contradicts himself on the same page, Later on, when Basby talks to Hashwolf, Basby says, those of us who were hit by the light perished, whilst those of us who were able to avoid it simply lost their powers. But we know that's not true, because Basby himself was hit by the light, so I don't know why he even says that. That's a really, really weird oversight. Lil Toto and Giselle manage to avoid the beams of light, but their Volston digs are still stolen from them all the same. And this is, again, I'm absolutely fine with, and I wish Kubo had just gone this route with Basby and Nanana. Maybe he could have made those two also somehow avoid the light, or even just kill Nanana off. Like, have him and Robert both be struck directly by the light. They're both killed outright, whereas Basby, Lil Toto, and Giselle manage to avoid it and they just lose their holy forms. That would have made more sense. But consistency is thrown out of the window by the time we get to the final Auschwitz, and we only see two victims, this time being Juhalbach's right-hand man himself, Hashwolf, and also Sternritter M, Gerard Valkyrie. And they're just, com again, two completely different ends of the scale. Gerard Valkyrie is supposed to be, like, basically the most powerful of all the Quincy. He is ridiculously strong. He basically can't be killed. But Juhalbach's Auschwitz strips him down to the bone instantly, murdering him on the spot. Hashwald is hit by the same beam and doesn't, doesn't die immediately. He holds on for a little bit longer. Even then, it's different to how it is with Basby and Nanana. Neither of them seem to be in a particularly bad way, with Basby even being able to fight Hashwolf later on. But Hashwolf here, the moment he is hit by the Auschwitz, he collapses on the floor, unable to move and barely able to talk. It is a little bit disappointing that the Auschwitz seems to be so inconsistent that I'm not even sure what Kubo was really going for with this ability. There are at least four different outcomes, apparently. Either you will be stripped down to the bone and immediately killed. You'll either be robbed of your powers, but it doesn't seem like anything too bad is going to happen to you, apart from obviously Masaki was in a bad situation to begin with. You'll either have your holy form stolen from you if you're not hit by the light, or if you are hit by the light, you won't be killed outright, but you will still be able to use your shrift, and I assume you can't use your Volsendig, because it's not explained, but 
or you'll or you'll be like Ash Wolf and you'll just collapse to the ground. So it's it's really really weird that the Ash Violent is so weird. Uh, I think it's a really cool ability conceptually. It quite literally puts the fear of God into the Sternmitters. And again, I, I love the way that Yuhar Bark is supposed to be this all-father. He proclaims them to be his children. You know, he calls them my son and stuff like that. But then he'll just kill them at the blink of an eye because he needs their powers. And supposedly they should be willing to die for their comrades because they are comrades. I love that. Unfortunately, it just doesn't explain the inconsistencies. And like I said, some of them are so blatant that I'm kind of surprised Kubo really didn't even notice this. The fact that Basby actually says those of us who were hit by the light died and yet he was hit by the light. It's, that's really, really weird. And you get that panel of Robert kneeling on the ground, looking up to the sky, now a skeleton, which, by the way, again, is fantastic visual imagery. Um, but Hashwolf says that those of them who were deemed unnecessary died and their power was given to them who are necessary. But Robert was the only one who died. So again, it's really, really weird. But I do like the ability in concept. And it is actually quite simple. It is just Yuho Bark's power sharing abilities dialed up to the max, essentially. Him taking power and lives with it and then distributing it back out again as he sees fit. And that's pretty much it for this video on the Aush Val. And I hope it did clear anything up for you if you weren't quite sure about how the holy selection ability actually worked i really don't know uh what to say about the inconsistencies other than they are there and i don't know how they're so blatant without kubo realizing them but if i was to do it differently i would probably have just had basby escape the light whereas nanana and robert both die it's a little bit more difficult with the hashwolf and gerard situation because i appreciate that kubo needed gerard to die like that and so he, the Auschwalen makes sense because we have seen it kill people like that in, in the past, but there's no reasoning for why Gerard and Robert would suffer the same fate, but Hashwolf wouldn't. Either way, it's a cool power, and it does make Yuhabak really feel like a godly being. But I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Like I said, if you haven't hit the button already, make sure to subscribe now. I would really, really appreciate the support. But until next time, guys, I should catch you later. I'll see you then.